Hello, everyone. So we were discussing the, the five key principles to develop any enterprise data strategy in the modern organization. Uh, and in the past videos uh, you have seen, we have discussed two first two steps, what is happening and uh, what is the success. Uh, and you can see these two terms uh, really define the baseline of your, your data strategy. Now we are moving now towards the 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 execution or analysis part of 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 the uh, of the of the data strategy because the first two are more like you know the feasibility and and the and the discovery part and now we are more like you know analyzing and then executing uh, the in, in the actions or, or or you know steps to to realize the the strategy that we we. Uh, literally defined in the in the in in, in in the discovery and analysis phase. So these are the very key important steps that we need to keep in our mind while we are defining the uh, enterprise uh, data strategy because it varies from organization to organization. It's not like you know a silver bullet that you can use across the uh, seamlessly across all the organization. Uh, it Every organization is different. Every organization have its own processes and every organization has its own uh, objectives and, and beyond and goals. Uh, and the enterprise data strategy is aligned with those strategies and goals. So make sure while you are building your strategies, these strategies or you know the, the action plan that you are building for, for your data platform that will address the, the, the strategy or, or the, the VN of the organization, which I have mentioned a couple of times. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually move towards the, the uh, third third step, uh, which is obviously uh, uh, an, uh, a very important step from the an analysis perspective or discovery perspective, which we call, what are the questions? So let's uh, jump into, into the screen and I'll show you what that means. Excellent. I do believe you can see my screen. I just need to, let me see if I can make it as a full screen. I can do it here. Yeah. There we go. So, hold, let me just, you know, here. Yeah. It's really hard to move. You know, I think that that's better. Yeah, at least we can see uh, the whole whole thing. And I do believe there is nothing on on that side. Uh, so what are the questions? Uh, obviously, if you remember uh, in our in our step two, uh, we define the success. Now, obviously that success criteria, it is going to be based on a couple of questions which we're gonna uh, first identify because that is the analysis which we are doing. So these are the question. If we find the answer of this question that will reach to the success or acceptable solution by the business. So you can see how now uh, the dots are connecting to each each other in the previous step we define okay that the success criteria of, of the uh of our strategy by the business uh that's what they consider as a success now we are going to ask the right question now that phase is extremely important because the whole thing is not going to be uh based upon what you are what you are going to uh, ask in terms of you know question because if you are asking the right question you each question will lead you one step closer to to your success criteria area if you are asking a wrong question uh, obviously once you start finding the answer of those questions they're going to lead you towards obviously uh, uh, in the other direction of of the success criteria and you are not going to uh, reach to to the uh, the success uh, milestone so that's why uh, we need to be very careful once we start asking the question and that's why the first two steps they're going to really help us to to you know to formulate our question and especially in the data and analytics uh, I would say everything is based on the right question. You know, you can learn the tools, you can learn the skill, but the, the biggest uh, skill that you need to learn is what are the questions we need to ask? Because we always have one statement and sometimes even we need to, we need to 
uh, we need to uh, find that statement by ourselves. You know, the best best analytical system uh, in 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 the industry has been called, which uh, go to the business and tell them, okay, these are the things you need to focus on. Now imagine what kind of analytic model, analytical model we are thinking. We are instead of business coming back to us and give uh, us their vision, we are based on the data and analytics. We are identifying uh, the action that will provide as you know in the form of prescription, which we normally call prescription prescriptive analytics and we prescribe to the business okay these are the areas you need to look at to you know that will help you to to uh, refine your strategy or or your goal so you can see where we we are heading uh, in the last video we're going to actually see how the the analytics stage move from diagnostic to all the way you know from the prescriptive analytics so that there's something which is coming uh, into into the uh, into the journey but right now let's focus back on what are the questions we should ask right so obviously the very first thing whatever our our uh, success criteria we first need to see how many systems are contributing into into the into the strategic goal so whatever goal and uh, you know uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to actually align it with the statement so for example if a telco company has a high customer churn rate and they want to uh, they have a strategic goal to reduce it so we're going to actually first ask the question how many uh, system in, in, the, in the in the enterprise landscape which are contributing into goal so that obviously means that uh, how many system has been used to store customer related data whether it's going to be the customer information whether it's going to be customer interaction whether it's going to be customer uh, survey responses you know all these things so that will help us to refine okay these are the system which are contributing into into this uh, this particular particular goal that has been set uh, uh, in front of us. Then the very next question uh, that are these systems are interconnected, like are we getting one source of truth or we due to these system uh, uh, disconnection, everyone is you know compiling this information in their own way and then producing it back to the, the board or exec you know to 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 uh, to uh, do the decision making or even the teams who are responsible for for these strategic tasks because that's a very important point you know most of the time you want to be surprised that in organization we call them data silos now each department has its own data world they are collecting that data which is completely disconnected from from the from the external uh, uh, departments or other departments or even external organization uh, and they literally use Use it in their own way they translate it and then they present it now that create one aspect in the business which might conflict or contradict to an other side of the the aspect uh, which is maybe coming from an other department and a very simple example Finance is always concerned about the number, so they are saying how how many customers they are paying their bills or they uh, uh, they you know they they are using their services and what are the the revenue uh, uh, the company is or business is getting from from these customers. If we turn the same concept towards the sales and marketing. Their goal is not the finance. They just need to make sure the number is always high. They are not looking, you know, they're not looking uh, at, okay, how much value customer is providing in terms of their revenue because they set their goals by the, uh, increasing the number of the customer for, uh, for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the business, right? Because more customer they bring is going to actually reflect better on, on the sales and marketing uh, profile. So you can see, Although we are looking the same thing, but we are looking at two different sides of the coin. So that's why the integration between these systems are very critical. And unfortunately, unfortunately, these days we are seeing lots and lots of disconnection between the system and in the organization, we have these data silos, which are sitting into, into the different departments and people are using those systems to produce that information, which is still letting the business go, but you can, see that you know the efficiency is not there and that that's why we need a business uh, the data strategy that can refine these processes so business can get the maximum value out of it 
third step, a very important one, these systems have the data quality and data governance issue. Do these systems have the data quality or data governance issue? Now that's a very, very critical point. And you know, uh, that's one of the biggest challenge at the moment industry is facing due to the lack of you know, mature data processes on, on the data landscape. And one of the uh, major reason is that uh, uh, the data is so complex in its nature that organization is uh, struggling to maintain the quality of the data. And one of the reasons, like we have discussed previously, because the systems are not connected and we have the isolated system, or you know, even worse case, we have these, these data silos that have been built within the organization. And you won't believe people build even, you know, Excel empires where all the logic and whatever they have built that is sitting within the excel file and you know only these people know what they have done it the only thing they can provide the final outcome to the business so business can keep running their day-to-day -day operation so it literally you know uh restrict them or ring fence them within the uh, i would say vicious cycle of of excel like they cannot look beyond that that okay if we want to extend our capabilities how are we going to actually improve or how are we going to you know extend or advance the capabilities of our analytics uh, which doesn't uh, completely based on the the excel file right so that that that's where the whole data governance and and the and the data quality comes into the picture and if i actually uh, discuss from the 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 business term obviously the all that uh, these these excel file they have piles of logic business logic that have been created within them which you know massage the data transform the data so obviously these business rule as part of the good data governance they they should be controlled by by the respective authority and uh, under the the radar of of the relevant stakeholder you know so that that will help you know many people to look at the these rules and then understand okay if they are going to add something new uh, that rule shouldn't conflict with the existing one you know that way we can make sure we always have one source of truth right why we always emphasize oh there should be only one source of truth there is a particular reason because if your existing data uh, a business logic library is not centralized or is not under the data governance uh, control that means anyone can define anything within the organization and he or she can build something based on that logic without cross checking with the existing uh, uh, terminology and that can you know create an other branch uh, of 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 the of the logic which might not go into the right direction which might not uh, support the the company vn which might even misdirect the 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 flow of the data into into a wrong direction because these rule they define the the data flow between the uh, between the system which is very critical right so so that that's why we need to see and that's how uh, when we talk to data governance we talk to data quality as well imagine if someone mistakenly defined some business logic which is not aligned with the existing logic which uh, and uh, it has an impact on any other system Imagine how much damage it's gonna create because maybe they believe their logic is correct in terms of their department, right? Without looking that whether the uh, the impact is uh, 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 is zero on uh, compare uh, on uh, on other department. Right. So without checking that if we are defining these logics for ourselves, that might create a, uh, an impression in the business, which is a very limited. And, you know, the, the power of the data with with the analytics and, you know, with these number, we can play any games. Right. We can really turn the, the right into wrong and wrong into right, because it all depends upon the on the context. So be very careful while while you are uh, looking at at the data governance and data quality from the strategy perspective. Every organization should have a very good data governance committee, which should have all the stakeholder on board. It doesn't mean that they always need to be present, but they're always aware and they always have access to all the latest role and and the and the uh, the the uh, uh, you know the logics or the business uh, values that. 
uh, that has been agreed between between these stakeholders and these stakeholders obviously represented different departments uh, of, of the same business. Now, the next one is very, very tricky because that, that's where we always struggle. Uh, do we have similar data definition in this system? I tell you the truth, if we have a, a person in the system, but it is not like, you know, uh, providing any financial value uh, uh, to, to, to the organization, our finance department is not going to be interested because it is not actually contributing into the number or into, uh, into the money, or, uh, whether it's going to be profit or it's going to be revenue or it's going to be, you know, uh, purchasing or sale. And uh, that, that's why it's not, uh, not in, in, the, in the interest of, of finance department. However, the same person, if it is sitting into our system and is not active, that is still still uh, 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 you know relevant for our our sale and marketing department because obviously once market uh, uh, marketing team is going to promote any brand value they're gonna see what are the existing customer or what are the even the previous customer now look there for them the definition of the customer is different than the finance definition right which is a very very common thing and now you can understand why the governance is so important and even if we have the different version of the same definition that needs to be that needs to be mapped and that needs to be controlled otherwise you won't believe how much damage it can uh, do for, for for the organization if we use wrong term uh, on our dashboard uh, in terms of you know defining those numbers because that clearly misdirect our executive toward the wrong direction and whatever decision they're gonna make it it might end up in the in the completely uh, i would say opposite way of of the defined uh, strategy goal so hopefully you can see the the whole aspect how how data definitions uh, similarity matters and even if the the terms are not similar between between different departments uh, which need us very strong mapping uh, uh, capabilities so we can define okay if one thing is different into one department uh, language and uh, if something is translated in marketing as a different why is that and what are the benefits or what are the gains of going to you know define in this way otherwise we try we try to you know keep the definition exactly the same right for for all these terms right and and that that that's where you know our strategy start refining and you can see it immediately start bringing the maturity and it start you know bringing the the uh, the the refinement of of the the data capability which is the one of the main goal and another uh, best part of it as soon as you start asking this question you start engaging the business stakeholders stakeholder you start engaging the people so they they become part of the data strategy and that that's the success of the 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 uh, the right uh, uh, the right uh, data strategy where you can engage people where everyone feel that they are on board they are contributing and they are benefiting from from your strategy Now, further we move on, then once we identify uh, 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 these system which are contributing into, into uh, uh, our strategic vision or goal, uh, the next one is more like a bit tricky. Have this system been used to contribute in the in the uh, strategic goal of the enterprise? Why I put it as a server, although I have already put that question in, in here. Uh, you. It's very funny, based on the experience we have seen, most of the time uh, in most organizations which are struggling with, with data practices and platform uh, uh, or data assets, they have the systems which are sitting there, which provide the, which are contributing into the strategy goal, but they have not been used. And there could be many factors. The, 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 the people who actually build these system, they are now gone, they, they leave the organization or someone in the past uh, purchased that, that system and it is, you know, they implemented and it is, you know, uh, that system or, or the software is generating some uh, information, uh, which is, uh, uh, which is, uh, 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 used by by other system to to you know to finalize the final outcome, but the system was not owned by anyone. 
And it is a very common thing which uh, while we work in the in the data and analytics, we see in in our lives in the in the in the data uh, of uh, sorry in the modern enterprises because things are moving so quickly now these days that is creating a lot of challenge. People come on the board, they build stuff, and then they leave it right, and the organization really you know retain these people on 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 uh, on their uh, on their platform to you know to keep the knowledge uh, uh, stored in the in the central repository most of the time people come people build stuff and you know this stuff has been or your know, this uh, solution has been delivered start providing the value and then you know those people or, or the team who build this system they move on Right now, that system is not going to be an orphan system where nobody is willing to take any ownership. Because imagine in the enterprise, if you put a, a hand on a system, that means that's your responsibility, right? And it might increase your your uh, your uh, workload or or stress level, right? So nobody is willing to you know do this. So that's why you need to see whether if. You have identified a system which is contributing into the strategic goal. Has that system been used or is it used in its full capacity or it is used in its partial capacity? That, that's, that's an, uh, that's an other, other uh, question for debate. The next step is again relevant to the previous one. Who are the custodians of this system, right? Do we have a proper uh, system owners uh, which are working in the system or these are more like the orphan system that nobody knows, right? And I think most of you are watching this video so far, they're all aware that every organization have some system that have been sitting there and nobody is, uh, is willing to you know, take the ownership and even, Tell you that the people who are witnessing the 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 development of the system as soon as they have been released and you know the major teams who build this system leave the organization okay that that's not us we didn't do it and we uh, even if they want they know they don't want to share it because obviously nobody wants to increase their their uh, workload unnecessarily right so that, that that's why it's very important to identify do we have all these systems which we are talking, which are contributing into our goal? Do we have all, uh, we have the honor uh, uh, of this system intact in the organization or we have the, the, the orphan system that nobody uh, is willing to, to take the ownership? Do we have external system contributing into the studies? You know, sometimes, so for example, survey system. Uh, now we know that uh, in order to, let me quickly come back to uh, my uh, uh, scenario where we want to decrease the churn rate. So obviously uh, we need to look in order to identify the root cause uh, or improve it. We need to know that, okay, uh, uh, What's the survey response of these customers who are leaving our business, who are uh, leaving our product? Uh, are they providing uh, uh, responses to our survey? Is there anything we can get from them in terms of the feedback? And normally these uh, uh, survey uh, solution, they are external to the organization, like the organization won't purchase the whole survey software, implement it, and then you know start using it. There, there's no point. Normally what happened with, with, uh, with uh, all these external survey provider like Qualtrix and uh, you know uh, there's a, uh, an other uh, famous one uh, which are in the monkey survey monkey and there are a bunch of other right which provide the capabilities you know to run the survey from their platform because they are providing uh, software as a service and then you can you can utilize the, the, that survey uh, with, with a limited budget uh, so that that really works most of the organization now do we have these external system that are going to contribute into your strategic goal that you are targeting Targeting, or there is no external uh, system, right? So that that's also part of the question that we need to ask as part of you know uh, of building our enterprise data strategy. Again, as soon as we identify the external system, the very next question, now you can see identification as well as the integration, they go hand in hand. And what, what's the biggest reason why I'm actually discussing them side by side? Because uh, remember, 
if the systems are integrated or dis uh, or uh, connected you're going to face less problem or you're going to face less challenges in in the in the in the in the information flow which is passing through this system but if systems are disconnected that there's going to create lots and lots of problem because obviously as soon as systems uh, disconnected uh, uh, systems are disconnected it creates the 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 risk of human intervention like obviously for example if i want to now load the survey or merge the survey information with another data set so for example i already have the have the uh, customer transaction history about about my product now i'm going to merge that history with with uh, with this uh, customer response to see the 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 uh, the customer feedback upon the services over the time that he was using and he was paying just you know to identify the pattern now if these two systems are not connected that means i have to actually merge these two sets together and that's where all these you know excel worlds come into the picture where people have massive excel files and they build and that's where it create multiple version of the truth and nobody's know that uh, what's the what's the right version and you know that there's a famous saying the truth is sitting somewhere between in all these version of excel file right none of them is correct but they are contributing in the in the correctness of of the data so we might need to write so that that's why that question is 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 very important another uh, extremely important in term of you know uh, like i mentioned previously uh, once we start discussing the the trend analysis to identify the patterns and behavior the historical information is critical uh, in 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 that activity because without having a good history of of our customer or our product or services or our you know uh, transaction we might not be able to you know to identify the the problem areas which we can improve to to achieve the goal so that's why uh, and i've seen most of the small to medium organization they they won't focus much on the history uh, uh, on on you know keeping the historical information because for them building the data warehouse is very expensive and it's not going to be consistent and it's you know uh, there are a lot of challenges but tell you that these days with the new modern uh, enterprise and uh, uh, sorry modern uh, technologies enterprise have to to build the right uh, data warehouses or data bots capabilities because that will contribute into the into the advanced analytics that can be built as part of their uh, enterprise data strategy and that can contribute directly into into the enterprise vision or goal right so imagine we are talking about ground stuff which can directly contribute into your top stuff which is sitting on on the on the uh, ceo or i would say board of directors level <clears throat> and we have discussed uh, so far all related to 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 the data uh, and like i mentioned with the the data and analytics you always get the 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 power of doing all sort of thing you know like i mentioned with the data uh, and analytics uh, 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 skills or expertise you can turn right into wrong and wrong into right so we need to look at how we are presenting that information all the level maybe the information which which has been presented towards the senior managers towards the teams towards the exec that's not a right way uh, to present them and that might not be useful or that might not be you know uh, helping them to to move fast with with the action if the things are not going uh, uh, right with with the with the with the uh, strategy that business is trying to 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 implement or the goal that business is trying to achieve so that's where the reporting and dashboarding is extremely critical because normally most of the people they are not dealing data data directly they always use some sort of front end tool to interact with the data and that's where the whole excel world comes into the picture because now most of the uh, 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 most of the uh, 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 working uh, uh, professional they are they feel themselves comfortable working with excels right so that's why they they spend their i would say full careers building all these excel empires where there are so many things in the in the excel and businesses using it but on the other side 
it the business is completely uh, i would say trapped into into that excel world that has been built over the time and even if they want to go beyond that they can't do because the whole knowledge is sitting within within the excel uh, dashboard and report they are using it right and nobody has time to you know to 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 change it because that require additional effort and 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 time so that that's why we need to see whether our dashboards are flexible or 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 up to the mark that are providing the right information uh, or they need improvement in term of you know providing right information to right audience so it can improve improve the 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 the, the uh, existing uh, processes uh, so that that that's uh, these are some of the question obviously like i mentioned there's no single silver bullet that you can use across every organization every organization is different so once we build uh, the data strategy once we reach to that phase where we need to ask this question it varies from organization to organization, right? Some steps are relevant, some steps are not relevant, right? And some step we'll find the answer and some step we just have blank faces in front of us or even, you know, so it's completely darkness. So we need to, you know, put the light there by ourselves, right? But at the end, it will help us, you know, to, to put a really nice and strong data strategy. Now quickly run through the, the scenario that we are uh, discussing. So if we just translate all these questions in a particular scenario, we have uh, the target to, to, uh, to reduce our success criteria that in this year, if we can reduce the, uh, the churn rate up to, up to 15%, which is currently 20%, right? Do we have data available at uh, uh, related to a treated customer, a treated uh, like uh, the customer who left uh, the the service or or, or stopped using our our uh, 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 business services? How many systems are contributing into customer data? And then there's something I've already explained that customer data normally won't sit into one system, right? In normal uh, medium or uh, enterprises, uh, we have more than one system who are retaining customer or customer related data. So that, that's why we need to identify this system while we are building our enterprise data strategy. And that is all again linked to the to the data governance. Is the customer data set complete and correct? Because that's one of the most important part of the whole whole uh, 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 exercise of building the enterprise data strategy. More accurate your data is, more uh, 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 contribution is gonna make into into your uh, uh, strategic vision or strategic goal of of your enterprise. Right? If you are struggling with the with the data quality, uh, the completeness and correctness and even the availability you can see how it's gonna directly impact on 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 your uh, on your enterprise data strategy and as well as on your enterprise vm and you know uh hold it back in terms of you know getting its its full uh, value uh, at the end of the year and one system, especially from the external system perspective, uh, just an example, like, uh, do we have the customer survey uh, results available? You won't be surprised if I tell you that most of the organization, they don't even bother to collect the, 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 the customer response or customer feedbacks about their businesses that how they are doing. They are so caught up with, you know, internal processes and, you know, uh, uh, making uh, the services ready that they won't even, think of that they need to get the, the 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 feedback from the customer that what they think about their business what uh, what kind of uh, features or you know services they are expecting from from the uh, the business not all the business and currently i have seen the trend is shifting like more and more organization are now giving value to to the customer to provide their feedback you know just to to uh, to uh, compete in the market because obviously now we can see how things are uh, evolving and we have multiple brand multiple option available in the market so every organization they are they are making sure that they are hitting hitting uh, uh, the the targets and you know they are competing uh, or beating the other other uh, companies uh, for for the same services and one of the major thing they are uh, using to in uh, to uh, to achieve that target is using the customer feedback because that will help them to 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 find out how how they are doing and what customer think about them and what 
can they do a bit different to not only retain the existing customer, but also attract the new customer. So you can see it's not only the internal system that's gonna contribute into that. We need some external uh, uh, information, or external uh, systems as well. So we can you know, complete that data sets and then based on that, we will uh, define our uh, strategy. And obviously that strategy is going to be feed through, through the uh, feed through the uh, enterprise data strategy heavily. So that, that, that's the phase uh, uh, or step three of the enterprise data strategy uh, journey. Uh, hope you like it. If you have any question, please feel free to put in the comments. We'd love to discuss or, you know, uh, 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 contest or you know uh, agree on 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 uh, uh, things that might occur into your uh, uh, side uh, but that that's collaboratively uh, you know uh, we're gonna build something that can help not only us but uh, other professional in the in the in the data industry as well so thanks for watching and i'll see you soon in the next video where we're gonna see what are the answers? So we define the question. Now we are now going towards finding the answer because that, that will push us entering into the execution or realization part of our data strategy. So see you soon. Thank you.